Hi there, how are you? I'm excellent. It's sunny and it's a new day and I've had a lot of coffee, so thank you. Good, good, good. All right. Well, welcome everyone who's joining us. Um, I am Melissa McLeod at The Wool and the Floss in Gross Point, Michigan, just outside Detroit. And I'm here with Megan Holmes from the Needlepoint Clubhouse. And together we're the Pointing It Out team um, for our YouTube podcast. So we're so glad you joined us. If you're joining us for the first time, please make sure to hit subscribe and you'll just get a little email whenever we have a new upload. And um, yeah, we've gotten a lot of great feedback. So we'd love to have you join us regularly. And if you're a longtime subscriber, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. And today we are talking about belt straps galore. So everything you need to know, well, maybe not everything, but most things you need to know about stitching a belt and the things you can do with it and all that good stuff. Because as shop owners, we both get tons of questions about this all the time. And Melissa, um, I have something to tell you. Uh-oh. I feel like this is the day I've been training for my entire stitching career. It's you belt say. day. I'm an you expert. This is it's how you started. That's how I started. This is what I live. I mean, I am here for it. I am so excited about the Needlepoint Belt God podcast. Yes, <laughs> Megan is going to shine today, everyone. Just, just saying. And I need to put on my new peepers that I got up at the Wool and the Floss because I have lots of notes. So Okay. Well, you go. I think um, the majority of our belt business for both of us is like the standard good old-fashioned men's belt that's been around forever and will be around forever. And, you know, we have lots of love for the needlepoint version. Um, and since this is your shining moment, I'm going to let you I'm take it. So um, here and there. First of all, I think you've all heard me say that belts are what got me into needlepoint because um, I came to St. Louis. It's a huge belt city, needlepoint belt city. And so um, I was like, what's all this fuss about? I want to learn about this. So it turns out one of the reasons why this is like kind of a big belt city is because we happen to have um, a finisher here in St. Louis who um, works for or works with shops all over the country. So um, it's really easy for us shops here in St. Louis to, to work with this finisher. So um, the interesting thing about this local finisher is that he has been doing this for about 40 years. He's in his 60s um, and he worked with his dad and now it's his business and his brother. It's a wonderful little shop and um, I should actually B-roll. I've gone in there and like filmed him and taken pictures and stuff because I'm such a nerd about it. I think it's so cool. But um, the good and the bad news about this local finisher is that he is like super on point. Like this is what he does. This is what right. he does well. He doesn't do colored leather. He does, I mean, it is like bam, 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 bam. And I'm nodding because for those that are out there, I use the same <laughs> finisher. So when Megan and I first got to talking about shop stuff when we first met each other, I said, oh yeah, my belt finishes in St. Louis and, and you know, blah, 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 away we went. So anyway. And I said, yeah, I bring him beer like for the holidays and stuff. And she's like, you do what? And I was like, I know he's my buddy. I love, love this guy. And I've learned so much from him. So um, when you bring a belt in, should we start with bringing a belt in for finishing or should we? Yeah, that's the best way to do it, right? So if you bring a belt to me. Well, I usually you, start with when people buy a belt. Because, you want to do that first? Okay. Well, just, just in terms of extra rows. I think that's important. Okay. So buying a belt, you buy a belt. It comes from lots of different designers. You have all these belts, right? And you say, I don't even know where to start. How do I know the size? How do I know about blah, 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 the type? And it really is important to think about what the end result is of your belt before you start stitching it because there's different width lengths, widths, et cetera. And um, uses. And we'll get into the uses. Uses, yes. But um, I think what, what we should start with is the standard old men's, I'm sorry to say, slash women's, but the, the kind of standard finish for a belt. So Melissa's going to, yep, yep, this yep. This just little basic guy. This, this is a customer's belt. Um, and we'll talk about this in a minute. But yeah, just your standard. Standard belt. So um, our finisher does... And Melissa and I kind of just talked through this, but I think I'm really even or something. It's funny. Um, so, our, so I have all these buckles that are choices, but there's really two types of belt finishes. One is called brass, and the br and this is what our finisher calls it. So it's a very misleading um, description, in my opinion, because when I've talked to Jim about this, uh, the finisher, I've said, why is it called brass? And he's like, I don't know. My dad called it that, and that's what I've always called it. So the standard 
brass finish is a buckle like this with a leather keeper here. So oh, well, that's what that was called. A keeper. Oh yeah. So oh. you, you put your, it keeps, it keeps okay. the, the end thingy. What do you call Love it? Tab. Tab. Is it a tab? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> excuse me. I'm still like almost done with that silly cold. Um, so anyway, so this is called a brass finish. It's got a one-sided buckle and it's got a leather keeper. Unfortunately, I don't have the, what he calls a regular finish, but I do have the buckle. The regular finish is where it goes in one side. Well, I'll do it the right way here. It goes in one side. Yeah. Sorry, upside down. Wasn't, wasn't exactly camera ready. And out the other. So in other words, it's keeping itself. And this is the wrong size. I just grabbed the belt that I had sitting here. But, it, but the keeper is in the buckle. So it doesn't have that little leather keeper over here on the side. And so brass and regular. Brass has a keeper, regular does not. But the misleading part is that the colors or the tones. I was just about to say that. Silver or gold. So brass is a solid brass buckle, but it can also be a silver tone. Silver tone. And that's what the majority of my customers do the, the leather keeper, I guess, is what. I would say 95% of what we do here through the shop is the. Um, brass finish, which has the keeper. Um, however, it, you have to do stitch length is belt size minus six inches. And the reason for that is because this right here and this over here, when you add that together, it's, it's six inches. It's what, the, it's what you need, excuse me, it's from here to here is the six inches. And let me point out something while you're holding that up those little leather tabs that are sewn on cover up about the first inch and a quarter of correct. the stitching. So it's if not an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter, correct. And so, yes, so you also have to pay attention to where your design space is. By the way, I designed this for my son when he was 18 months old because I was a belt psycho and I wanted him to have a belt at 18 months old. So this is a little Thomas. And, and the finisher will also kind of like make adjustments. Like he's, he, as Megan said, he's been doing this for 30, 40 years. He's going to pick where it looks best for those little tabs to land on there. And there is an option, and I can't believe I'm even going to say this because Jim would kill me for putting this out there. There is an option for what we call a blunt tab. Yes. So he really? can basically tab that in, kind of cut that little nose off of that tab there, but he doesn't like doing it because it's not part of his like, he has all these pre-made, he sticks them on. It's, it's kind oh. of like a, a machine. And that's how it keeps his pricing reasonable. That's exactly right. Yeah. So he will charge extra and you can have that t tab cut down, but it's not ideal. It's also not as strong because you have less leather here that's attaching to this guy. So it's not an ideal situation, but every tab right here takes up an inch and a half of space right here, okay? So um, that's the brass finish. So it's belt size. And remember, there's a difference between waist size and belt size. Belt size less six inches is how much stitching you need for the brass finish. Should we talk briefly about how to measure belt size? We sure can. Okay, um, so, um, and I'm not gonna know the proper names for all of these belt parts, so forgive me. You wanna measure from where the toggle thingy, one of my the, technical terms, the prong, meets the side of the D. So the, and the inside part, not the outside part. It's only a quarter of an inch difference, but if people are really picky about how they fit, they want to measure from this inside part where my finger is right there. The tip of the prong. Wear it on. Tip of the prong to most used hole is what we like to say. Correct. And then he always puts in five holes, right? And they are an inch apart. So if this, if your prong to here is 33, that gives you 30. Five to 31. I did that backwards, but you know what I mean? So you get a range. So you don't have to be completely neurotic about it, but it's different from how you would buy a belt at Joseph Banks or something like that. That's right. And when people come in and say, so there's a couple things. When people come in and they say, well, I don't know the size that my husband wears. I'm like, well, you can go ahead and do it, but I'm not going to endorse it because you've worked, you're going to work really hard on this belt and you want it to be right. So it is always best to measure a belt. If you really, really can't, 
you can take waist size plus two inches Correct. because that's a rather standard belt size. But again, we literally have you sign off on the form that you have endorsed this size because it is, it's a beast. And you like, you've spent all this money, all this time, whatever. And you, the last thing you want is for the size not to be correct. Can I throw a little, one other little tip? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> um, make sure the belt that you get out of your husband's closet it's is one that he's been wearing. Say that again. Yeah. But you got to make sure it still fits him. Because yeah. if your husband happens to be acting like a girl, pardon the phrase, um, and think that he's going to fit into that belt again, and you didn't realize it, and he never gave it away, then you have his belt made for the wrong size. And yes, I may be talking from personal experience. <laughs> so, anyway, just a side note. <coughs> Sorry. The other thing that you're making me laugh, so now I'm... Um, the other thing that I threw out there, and I did not tell you about this, Melissa, I call it the dude factor. So grandma comes in and says, my grandson is going to XYZ high school. I want to make him a belt. And she's like, but I think his waist size is this. I think it's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The young bucks, the teens, pull their pants down over their hips. So there's a dude factor there. So you might think that you have the right size of belt, but your hips are wider than your waist. So just saying, if you're making a belt for a teenager, I always say consider the dude factor. Everybody laughs at me, but I'm like, you might want to add an extra inch at least because I've had a number of sweet grandmas come in and say, I measured his belt and it doesn't fit. And I'm like, well, does he wear it on his waist or does he wear it on his hips? Just saying, so, can't stretch, so, belts don't. This is maybe a good, good. oh, there, there's two things to bring up. Um, I did have a customer who was measuring her, her husband's Eddie Bauer belt, which stretches. Don't measure a stretchy belt. It seems obvious, but that was an issue. Um, the other thing is this belt. Um, this is a customer's belt that just came back. Um, and I'm just going to mention this because this was a belt that used to fit and looked really worn. So for those of you who have belts, needlepoint belts that you know you inherited from someone or have had for a long time, our belt guy can remake them so they look brand new. I mean, he, they can be cleaned. They can, you know, it's it's amazing. The only thing he can't do is sometimes they're so worn that like you're almost seeing canvas through here. Like obviously that's not going to get fixed, but um, they can be redone. So we don't like to have them redone because we didn't uh, take into account the dude factor or because we took the wrong belt out of our husband's closet. But people go up in size, down in size. They inherited dad's belts, whatever. They can all be made to fit you however you are, whatever size you are currently, so. And I don't know if we wanna talk about this right now, but I get questions probably twice a week about how to clean belts. Do we wanna talk about that really quick or do you want me to keep going with the belt? Let's just keep going. Okay, we'll get back to that. Um, all right, so we've got the brass finish, right? And the brass finish comes in a number of widths. So you can get the really big slide, you can get, I think, the standard is one and a half, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. This is one and a quarter. So um, when you are stitching your belt, it is preferable to the, our local finisher that you do three turn rows. And here's why. Can you see? Really? It? Yes, it is preferable that there's three. I've always been told two. He can deal with two. Jim can do anything. But he, when I said, if you had the dream belt, because you know, I love to like poke him a little bit. If you had the dream belt, what would it be? He says three turn rows. Interesting. Because I'll make a note because he's always told me to, so he's changed his way, so that's okay. Two for 13 mesh because it's a little bit thicker, and so he doesn't want necessarily, he can deal with it, but the preferable thing is three turn rows on 18 mesh, two turn rows on 13 mesh. Now, you say, but what if I do the binding stitch? Binding stitch. First of all, it sucks. I hate doing the binding. No, everyone hates stitching it. I hate the binding stitch. He will use it, but doesn't doesn't need it by any means, and actually prefers the turn rows. Right? Jim prefers the turn rows. Uh, so I'm sorry to be using. I can't help myself. So our local finisher, the finisher Melissa also uses, prefers the turn rows. It's a smoother finish. I think it um, looks cleaner personally. As as he would say, as the finisher would say, I deal with whatever every day. And he can do the binding stitch. What happens, in my opinion, with the binding stitch is that you're kind of going around the edge. And so you're creating um, a longer stitch, essentially. And personally, I don't think it's as um, wearable because it's a longer stitch. 
I think this is more wearable. I think it's, in my opinion, a better stitch. It's more fun to stitch, just regular tent stitches and the binding stitch. Um, so you can do the binding stitch. It's not preferable, in my opinion. So the and who, who am I? Just the belt queen. Just the other question I get on the turn rows is, does it matter what color it is? And, or do you do it in pattern? So I will tell you my opinion on that is if it's an overall pattern like this belt, oh, I'm sorry, um, I do my turn rows in pattern. Same. So whatever's on the edge. But to be honest, someone who's maybe not quite as OCD as I am might say, I'm gonna have brown leather on the back, so I'm gonna do it all in brown. So either way is fine, because really, who's looking at the side of your belt? If, if they're looking at the side of your belt when you're wearing them, they better be your significant other. Is my That's opinion. true. That's true. And I would say it's true. Like um, this could have had, you could even consider that a little extra design detail. Like she could have just done all of her turn rows in white or red or whatever. It doesn't matter. Blue, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter, but it is going to show a little bit. I mean, it's going to show, but it's not going to show for the, for the observer, I guess. Right. Right. Um, okay. So the other finish is the regular finish, which we briefly talked about. And I lost my buckle. And that's the one that heats itself. Um, that one only takes less four inches and not less six inches. And the reason for that is because of that keeper that you saw. So that takes, that's, that needs extra space. So we suggest this sometimes for, and that, that's a, a gold tone or a silver tone and all the different sizes, which um, we suggest that sometimes for kiddos, especially little kids, because right. um, they're already so small anyway that the amount of leather is sometimes equivalent to the amount of stitching and it just, is kind of silly. So, um, so yeah, so leather, excuse me, brass, regular. The other basic um, question we'll ask you is what color of leather? And we have these four um, samples. Right. Uh, they're, the dye lots are going to change just like anything. But for, sure. the, for all intents and purposes, our local finisher in Melissa's too does dark brown. He calls it wine. I grew up knowing this as like Cordovan, I guess. Um, Cordovan. Thanks. Uh, tan and black. 95% um, of the belts are dark brown. I always say, if you don't know, go dark brown. It goes with Sperry's. It goes with flip-flops. It goes with nice dress-up shoes. I mean, dark brown is kind of your standard. It will even go with black. Now, I say brass, dark brown. You're safe. And I asked Jim once, and he said, you know, like literally 95 to 98% of what he does is brass yeah. and dark brown. So, yes. Yeah. That's what we mainly do. Um, black and silver here and there. <laughs> yes. Um, really quickly on width. So, Colors, that's your choices. Two buckles, your choices. Width is a choice. So he can do, um, I think it's one and a half, one and a quarter, one, maybe that's uh, it. So three the point quarters is, of an inch when we get to dog collars, but. Well, and baby belts. So like my other son, my other one. So we did this little guy, little tiny buckle. And I yes. personally, if I were making one for myself, I'd probably do a little guy like that too. I think yeah, it's a little, little more, more feminine. For sure. um, but um, no matter what, you need to know width, finished width, and add three turn rows on either edge. Or two, because that's what we've been doing for 26 years here too. So it works. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. <laughs> I don't want anybody like just to be like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you told me the wrong thing all these years. We're good. But yeah, for 26 okay. years, he's been doing it for us with two turn rows. So it works. It, it abs 100% absolutely works with two turn rows. 100%. So, um, so yeah, so that's standard men's every day, right? Did we cover it? I think we did. I think we did. You did a great job. Thank you. Okay. So where I get a lot of questions and probably because I have a little bit of a collection. Let's see if I can pick all of these up. I brought in all of my, I call them my fancy belts. I don't know if that's really the term, the proper term. So here's all of oh my, my gosh, look at that collection. Belt collection. So I can't wear um, fake jewelry. I can't wear um, fun jewelry, like your fun earrings. I can't, I've got a metal allergy. So I think this is where I um, make up for that. It's your time to shine. Shine at the waist. So these are technically called a grommet belt. So let's start with this kind of buckle. There, and um, so I, 
have this from my, my uh, gingham belt that I'm going to be making from you, um, from your pattern. So, and it has, I think this is called a D ring on the back, but it's not quite D shaped, but this piece, and then it has this little, you know, another technical term. I think I usually call this hooky do. So it's a problem. It, has, <laughs> it has a hooky do and it's got a thingamajig. <laughs> that the belt attaches to. So um, my whole like fancy belt thing, to be honest, started my friend Madeline, who is also a stitcher. I don't know if she watches this or not. She gave me this belt buckle years ago and I thought it was so pretty. It is. And um, this is what, when I was just a customer at this shop and it came with a belt strap. It was too small for me. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> so I'm like, I can fix that. And I actually call this my million dollar belt. So I'll, I'll tell you the story of this belt because I think it's kind of funny, but I think there's some lessons to be learned in this. So I came into the shop and I can still picture it. It was hanging on the wall right over there. I can see where it was. And I thought, oh, that'd be perfect for that turquoise belt buckle that Madeline gave me that I'm too darn fat for the belt she gave me. So I snatched up this belt. Oh, pretty. And um, as many of you know, belt can or excuse me, needlepoint canvas comes on two different lengths. It comes on 40 inch lengths and 54. Is that the long one? 54, right? So most belts, I shouldn't say most, probably 70% come on uh, the 40 inch length. And like voila does um, on the 54, a couple other companies do them on the 54, but most do them on the 40 inch length. So I stitched away on this belt and I distinctly remember being at soccer practice one day and, and, you know, I keep saying how I, I was too fat for the belt. Okay. I'm like a size eight or a 10. I'm not ginormous, but I'm not like teeny tiny. So this gal says to me at soccer practice, well, that's really cute, but how's that going to fit you? Oh gosh. <laughs> but she's a nice enough gal, but she clearly had no filter, but she really <laughs> led my brain down a path of like, oh my gosh. She's right, because if it has to overlap, we, so with the standard men's belt, as you were saying, it's typically six inches less, so 40 inches minus six, but with something that overlaps, you typically want four extra inches. So I didn't know as much then as I know now. So I came back and clearly my shop owner didn't do a lot of these belts. This was like, probably something she learned a lot from, from me. you right. Um, I bought a second canvas. Okay. We're getting to why it's called my million dollar belt. So I bought a second canvas and I stitched enough to have it made, but this doesn't have a clear repeat. So I ended up coming into a special class with a national teacher here to figure out which section of the belt to stitch to make it long enough. Okay, so yes, another cost. So then I turn it in and my um, Jean sends it off to the belt finisher that I still now still use and she had to piece it together. Well, that's what I was just going to say. How did they? So it is pieced together somewhere. I can't even see it. So she pieced it, so she sewed it together. You didn't needle point it like a tattoo. No, she pieced it together. So yes another cost <laughs> that so belt a lot associated talents belt by the way so don lynch and carol gantz love this story because i call it my million dollar belt <laughs> and so then what happened sorry we're, we're really going down a rabbit hole but i just think it's the funniest story <laughs> so then i you know i wear this belt blah 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 the center stone falls out oh no <laughs> Now, this isn't real turquoise. This is just like, you know, those fake things you get at Michael's or whatever, but it's darling. So I trot off to Michael's. There's no center stone like that is going to fit. So I go to my local jewelers. Oh my gosh, you really love this belt. <laughs> I do love <laughs> this belt. So anyways, to make a really long story short, a little, a little less long, I should say, I ended up, he ended up having to hire one of his customers who does a lot of jewelry work in turquoise to find me the center stone and to fix the belt buckle. So the other thing that I learned from this is if you look at the back of this, this is stitched yeah. onto the buckle. That's how it's attached to the buckle. Yeah. And now I'm much smarter. Now I have the belt finisher. Oh, 
Whoa. on with a snap around the keeper. Yeah. And, and you know, know what else actually, I don't, I don't know if you knew this trick or not either, but the, that's how the ones from our local guy are too. They're snapped. Well, that I knew, but I never had asked this, finisher. my fancy belt finisher to do this. So now I do, because in the end, it probably would have been less expensive to replace this buckle, <laughs> buckle. than it would have been <laughs> to have the piece made. So another thing is like, you know, styles come and go. So what I hope is that at some point, you know, this is one of my very favorite buckles and you'll know why. Oh, because it has um, a B on at it. At some point, I might think that this is a little gaudy. I don't know. Right now I adore it. Yes. Um, but at some point I might think it's a little gaudy and might want something simpler. So you can I it off. unsnap it and I buy myself a new buckle and away we go. So... so a couple questions I get about these is, um, again, this is, ah, sorry, this is a voila one. So it had tons of canvas. Um, so, if you have extra canvas and you'll recognize this pattern. Because oh. of course my That's million never going away. You uh, have that in every, how many, how many loops do you have? How many keywords? I think, I think I made three or four of them. Lots of uh. people gifted these. <laughs> So I do have one left. Um, so extra, extra belt canvas used for key fabs all day long. Um, so this one, I had plenty of canvas. If um, you are not a mini, mini person and you wear your belts at your hips, sorry, I'm looking through my, my many belts over here and it's made from a 40 inch canvas. Ah, so just wanna, really quick, I'm going to point out and I, cause I, I, I got obsessed with your story and I, I may have gotten confused. Did you mention to people there are two lengths of needlepoint canvas? It's either 54 yes. or 40, 40 and the 54. And that's all, that's it. Like you can't, right. they don't make it any other. So, okay. Now what I did like with this one, it was a very simple pattern. And so usually the 40 inch belts, um, they only paint like 36 inches of them a lot of yes. times. They leave two inches at the end. Mm -hmm. So I just hand counted out the repeat to the tip, tip, tip end on these. Um, so you can get a little extra out of it. But if you need a little more extra, is that a proper term? She can do a leather tip on the end. Um, and she can also add, ah, oh, sorry. No, that's right. I think I know where you're going though, is on the extra back side. On the front end, cause this side of the belt, ah, that side of the belt is hidden. Yeah. So she can add a little extra leather on that end too. So um, at that point, you know, um, the same is true of our local finisher. Again, he doesn't love doing it because can you see how that was extended? Right. So, um, yeah, because he charges a little, a surcharge for an extra large belt. Well, and if you're resizing what they, so do you see, this is like a standard, I don't know what is two inches or whatever, but this right. had an extra because if I'm, I'm being honest, we were using this as a uh, display for a snowman. Of course, I had a snowman that had a needlepoint belt on it. Please, no and we needed, we loved this belt, but we needed it to be longer and it wasn't on 54, blah, blah, blah. So I said, Jen, can you please? And so he added length on both ends of this Got so it. that it could be a super extra long belt. Right. Um, so it's possible. And to your point of if you inherit somebody's belt or you made one for your five year old and now he's 12, you can add on both ends. It's right. not ideal. It doesn't look the best, but at least you can still get the use out of it. So, right, right. Yeah, so she can add extra leather on either side to make it the right size. So for this, I think I mentioned it, but usually you want your belt size and you're still gonna measure your belt size the same way we talked about earlier from the inside of the D-ring thing for the prong, the hole you wear it on. Um, so you can still use that same measurement and that we're gonna tell our finisher as the finished size, that doesn't change. All that changes is instead of taking that finished size, which let's say it's 36, instead of it being 30 inches like it would be for the standard, what I call men's belt, even though we women wear it too, um, this is gonna be that 36 inches is gonna be plus four. So you're gonna need to sit, stitch 40 inches. So she also typically, her standard is, um, uh, let's see, her standard is three grommets. So she'll do three grommets, one, two, three. They're an inch apart too. Some people ask me to do five because sometimes we have high, high waisted pants. Sometimes we have low waisted pants, you know. So. so can she, this is a stupid question, I think, but go back to what you just held up. So can she do different colors of grommets? Cause I'm kind of obsessive about things like, see how that's black? 
can she do black, silver, gold? Well, you know, this, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm just yeah, no, she does because um, some of these are gold. I think this one's black. I thought this one was even colored. Is it not? No, these are gold. I think it's usually gold or black or silver. It's just kind of she she's so I'm using this other finisher too, and she's really nice to work with. So my guess is that she could do whatever we need. Um, but I was just curious if you've ever had that conversation with her. Yeah, and then sometimes you have this Ooh, kind of yeah any grommets. So cute. Um, yeah, I didn't know anyway, you had one so, like that. That's cool. Um, yeah, so she can do any color. She doesn't give me color samples to work with because she literally has like 50 colors. So Basically, what I mean, I've seen her like, chart. You can match it on pearl cotton. Did you know that? You can find a pearl cotton and be like, this is approximate color I want and she'll match it in that tool. Um, um, yeah, so what I usually do is I would just say, um, like this belt, for instance, I might say, um, you know, they'd like the darkest color aqua, if you have it, a second choice would be the lightest color of pink or whatever. And she's got a great color sense and no one has been disappointed yet. So, so uh, I think we have hammered home regular belts till oh. the day is long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, I just, I don't want to keep people like, you know, so, so other things, let's go on. So the other types of belts that are possible are D ring belts. I don't have one in front of me, but you could, you know, um, so two D rings on the end, two, uh, people were probably used to that in the 80s. So with two, belts. two of these kind of things that are layered is exactly what you're right. And so um, layer back. that can be finished with grosgrain ribbon on the back. That can be finished, I would guess, um, the, the specialty belt lady can probably finish with some leather on the back. I haven't asked her, but that's a possibility. Um, but I think that that kind of boils down belts. So the next thing, should we move on to what, uh, here, have we talked about everything? Let me just make sure, because there is a lot, you all. This is yeah. a big topic, and we were trying really hard to make sure we caught it all. So The other thing you've said you've done, and I haven't had this request here, and I think it's a regional thing, but you said you have had just, um, I think, grain ribbon put on the back and then use the ribbon to tie a bow, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. I, we're not big like bow wearers in Michigan, so maybe that's why, but I think so it sounds- It's pretty preppy, I would say. It's really, it would be cute for like around a dress. Like if you did, um, you could do even a velvet ribbon if you did like a Christmas um, or a, mm -hmm. like a seasonal belt and then a, like a, a velvet ribbon tied around, you know, like maybe more waist size with a, with a dress. Um, but the other thing is, uh, and I just lost my train of thought. Oh, um, it, when it's tied like that, you could use it um, also for, and we're going to get to other uses, but it's the same way that hat bands are finished. Yeah, so a hat so band a with a bow, um, it, it's really the same concept, but it's just obviously longer for your waist. Because if your head is the same size as your waist, like, wow. There's a problem with that. <laughs> um, Clearly the one who needs that extra leather tabs has never thought <laughs> But anyway, you, you <laughs> so um, really quickly before, let's see. So here's the things. Do we talk about, do we go ahead and talk about like how to stitch or what to stitch on belts? Or do we talk about other uses for belt strips? What do you well, want? Let's just do it like, cause we don't, we don't have a terrible amount of samples and we won't go into all this, but as Megan said, you can put them around a hat band. So like a straw hat with a darling hat band is awesome. We've done yep. that quite a bit. Um, do you have a sample of a dog leash there? I thought you did. I do. And do dog collars. So yeah. you can use, uh, I mean, there yeah. are dog collar canvases, but you can also make um, a dog collar. And, and these can be in different widths also. Melissa has, I think right. we, this one's really big and people always say, oh, but I don't want it that big, but it doesn't have to be, you have all those options of right. widths. So it's, it's done by this local finisher. I love these. We actually have a woman who works for a local shelter and she makes these for um, adopted dogs because um, one of these saved a dog's life. Like another dog attacked it and it was so thick that it saved him from being sort of like, hitting, you know, his neck. So wow. anyway, they're super, they're super durable. They're super great. Um, we actually also at my shop, and I did not talk to you about this. We have a different type of finish for this. We can do those clip ones. Um, right. I don't think the finish is quite as clean. It's using um, ultra suede and you attach a clip. Um, it's not adjustable. It's not my ideal finish um, because I, these are just so great because they're really durable and because there's a lot of um, room for growth. Um, yeah, because there, there's growth and shrinkage. And having an older dog, my dog's shrinking. You uh -huh. know, so, yeah. Exactly. So yes, dog collar. Um, the other thing we can do is a dog leash. Um, yeah, that's where I was going. And I don't actually have a dog 
leash in front of me, but what he does is he loops the end for holding, and I think depending on how long you want it, I think, I think he can either loop the needle point or add a leather loop. Um, but I think the leather loop is more standard because you know you only can go so long. Um, right. And then unless he, you he get would, two and have them pieced together. <laughs> Now, Jim probably wouldn't go for that. We'd have to figure out how to do that here in the shop. But anyway, and then just the standard um, uh, lobster clip. It can be a gold tone or a silver tone. Um, that's the choice for the dog, leash Perfect. or collar. Um, key facts. Um, yeah. A lot of people say, but I stitched a bajillion inches and I only need a half a bajillion inches. What do I do with all this extra stitching? So in our shop, we do this in-house. Um, this is a just a little loop of the extra um, belt. This is a very specific finish. It has to be um, the same width as a standard belt, one and a quarter width, and it has to be at least eight inches long because as you can imagine, if you were trying to flip something shorter than eight inches, this would just get really gummy. Like it, you wouldn't flip nicely. Um, right. There's a grommet finish here. We do these in-house and it's rather inexpensive. It's a way to use. However, Melissa has a couple of other sample. Yeah, so this uh, is, so we do them two different ways. So this is um, the more affordable way. It's just ultra suede on the inside. And again, as you know, this is leftover belt. And this is just like the less expensive hardware. It's just silver and just I don't know how my local gal attaches them, but she does. So this is like the great way to do them for someone that, you know, isn't that special in your life. Um, <laughs> And this is what you're doing for yourself. A more cost conscious, not less special, you goofus. <laughs> so this one is, this is actually my friend Terry's who's in Harbor Springs and she hasn't even seen this yet. So she'll be forever more on here. Um, and this is the Ann Fisher Y pattern thing, uh, but it's leathered on the inside. And this is my uh, fancy belt finisher. Um, can do them in any color, any color, ah, any color leather. I can't speak today. So. Um, it's leather tabs and leather insides, and she can do any width. So the other piece to that, width, but almost any width. The other piece to that is that if, in fact, that was extra canvas, and let's say there's, that's probably about eight inches or so, that leather finisher could also have made two tabs out of that because she could just back it in leather and tab it back into leather and tab it instead of looping it. So those are just again more options. It costs a little more because she's got to do two finishes, but. It would be a nice way to get two gifts out of the extra section of your belt if needed. So yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, and then we do. People are into doing purse straps with their belts. Yeah, we do a lot of those here. Um, this is uh, one of my employees did this, and she has um, a handbag that she switches out for the seasons. This is her like just St. Louis one but she's got a winter one and a fall one. And so this is the double sided. And this of course goes all the way across, across the body. body. Um, I did, I think I showed this maybe on another podcast, I'm not sure, but I had um, short straps made for my kids' treat bags. So, so this, is this is actually one belt cut in half and basically finished twice in the same way. And then our finisher, our in-house, or uh, one of our finishers made these little bags to kind of attach with D-rings. So. Um, so the same finish, different lengths. Yeah, we've got a couple of those too, but um, I think I've shown this off before. But I oh, love really that. So this is a belt, um, which actually my daughter found at a resale shop she was volunteering at. Oh and gosh. she snapped it up. They were literally going to throw it out. Yes, it is true. Um, and so we had it put on these straw bags um, with you know, some little additional doodads. But yeah, so, and then I think you have done the handles on canvas bags too, right, with belts? We have, really quick, just as a, an aside, it can be done wider. The same, if this is a camera strap. Okay. If the person wanted it wider. I don't know, maybe it was more comfortable for around here or something like right. that. So, but, so any width. Um, and guitar straps are kind of the same thing, right? It, pardon me? A guitar strap is similar, it's just a same. little bit. Um, and guitar strap measuring is a little more complicated because of the individual. Um, so we've done those. We just really work with the customer to make sure that we're, you know, which kind um, on, a, on a guitar strap, there's sometimes the thingy, as you were calling it, the prong or the metal tab on the guitar. So um, the finisher can actually do like the dot drag thing where it like hooks in and then the clip on the other side of maybe. So that's a little more of a specialty, but yes, we can do that too. 
Um, so strap, strap, strap. Oh, straps onto, you said, um, a canvas bag. Yes. We can, uh, I don't have one in front of me. I don't have one either, but we've both done them with it. But they're just like the, the handles on like a boat bag. Tabbed on with a piece of leather, a little yeah. tab of leather. Yes. Okay, and then we've got trays. You have a fabric tray, don't you? I do. Um, I have, this is um, actually an oval shape, but I think really you could do any shape depending on how much um, camp. Uh, I've done it in squares, but the corners aren't super square for obvious reasons. Oh yeah. Um, um, so this is all finished in fabric. The one thing I regret that I haven't done yet for this, just as a tip, um, and this would be post finish, I mean, or we could probably do it for you. I would like to have a piece of glass cut for inside here. Um, sure. I think that would protect the fabric and it would just be nice if you could clean it, but I just haven't done that yet because yeah. who has time? Right. Um, yeah, so, and that has, that's corded on the top. It's sewn in, you know, so it's, that's a really cool way to finish a belt. Yeah, and we, and a um, more, less cost effective way, there are two other options I've, I, we have done in shop and I know I've got a couple out of the finishers. So I don't have any to show right now. Um, is you can do the same thing that Megan just showed, but with leather and it's yeah. gorgeous. Gorgeous, I but. Also had my um, woodworker make a wooden box out of, it, and usually it's a spe, you know, a super special thing. So he's made a wood box with the belt around the edges and it was because it was, you know, somebody's father yep. who had passed and they wanted yep. to save it in a special way. So, um, so that was pretty. in that vein though, do you have your Lucite? Yes. So yeah. that's my acrylic tray. So what I did with this one, you could make a small tray with the belt all the way around. But again, usually you're dealing with 36 inches. So 36 divided by four is nine, correct? I think I did my math for something like that. Um, and so a nine by nine tray to me wasn't that usable. So I had our Lucite tray made with a belt and you'll see it is Santa belt on the front and then grow grain ribbon on the side, Love short that. sides. So there you have it. And it's it. also so, in set top and bottom on some fabric or something, isn't it? That's not your yeah. stitching. So this has a channel in here. Huh? And so this can be wardrobe. So this little guy slides out and it's just, it's ultra suede on the, ah, sorry, it's ultra suede on the back with some uh -huh. cording and then the ribbons on the side. Um, and so this way, like this, I have my Christmas guy in here, but you know, if I ever have time to actually stitch, I can do like a fall version and oh, a spring okay. version. And this could be the tray that keeps on giving. So something we just did, and I have to mention this because it was so special. So um, someone brought me their uh, deceased father-in-law's belt and said, what should I do with this? And I'm like, well, let's think about it. So we actually removed the tab here and here, which made the ends a little raw, to be honest, but it was kind of cool because um, it was worn. And we had the acrylic finisher do the exact same thing with the channel, and we just, set in the used belt into that channel. So it was, it's a really special, it'll be a gift for, I think the son of um, oh, the man nice. who passed. So it's kind of cool because it, it, as you mentioned, the size is a little bit smaller. It's not particularly useful, but it could be, you know, on a desk for business cards or some pens or, or whatever. And it's just kind of a special way to do something with all the belts that the person's wearing anymore. So right. I like, I, I love that. that. It was really special. So, okay. So so have we kind of covered, I think we've covered like kind of the typical things that you can do with a belt. Um, we've already talked about some of the things that were on our list. Um, I think typically for most of the time for a belt, you want to stick with basket weave. Um, that's really your best choice. I do have one of my belts I was showing Megan that has all like mini fancy stitches. Um, but keep in mind, I wear this belt about, um, you know, maybe 10 times a year. So it's, it's not getting worn a ton and I'm super careful with my things. So I do have fancy stitches, but generally um, not really what you want to do. So, right. And it just doesn't wear as well, obviously, because you're leaving space in the canvas. And so it doesn't, it's not as strong is all. Um, and yes, same goes in my opinion with um, what to stitch it in. So silk versus wool. Um, people ask me all the time, and we have a lot of, and I know you do too, a lot of silk wool blends, which are wonderful because you have the sheen and the strength, um, but I always prefer to do wool. So your store's about opening, so we- I just store's opening, so we're going to have to wrap this up pretty yeah. quick, sorry. Uh, but anyway, so wool, one strand wool is wonderful, two, double strand, so impressions, um, 
the one strand wools that we carry are the planet earth wool and i know you carry the uh merino vineyard merino, the vineyard merino. Yeah. and um and then the multiple strand wools impressions bella luso bermalana um oh and uh I forgot to mention essentials are also is also a great essentials. Um, Meg and I were both just made aware that she, they normally come in a ten yard little card, which is great for the little logos or whatever. But uh, they have just started coming out with the larger hanks of like the classic kind of belt background colors. So Super we're excited really excited about that. Um, and people always ask me too, can you mix types of thread on a belt? Of course you could. The one thing that I always caution people on, though, is along this edge. So if you're doing your turn rows or your, your top and bottom, try as you might to use something really strong because um, I don't prefer cotton along these edges. Um, I think it just wears. It, it loses its sheen. <laughs> it loses the sheen and it wears faster. Um, so um, I think the last piece of what we were trying to kind of cover here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like sort of tools. There's you There's not a ton, but a couple things to know about. So um, we sell for people that like might never stitch a belt again. We sell these little clip guys. And so that enables you to roll your belt up on either side. And so you only have like, you know, eight inches exposed. So you're not having this big, long tail hanging around, getting dirty, getting annoying, whatever. So right. Ours look like this, Megan's look like that. They're both operating the same deal. They're just, they're both coated so that no damage is gonna get done to your canvas or your threads. Thank you. People say to me, why can't I just use a binder clip? Of course you could. But if you're gonna have it in your stash for a long time, like often you and I do, because we've got a hundred other projects going on, sure, right. don't use metal because it's just gonna rust. If it gets moist and it's gonna be just a problem. So these are right. cheap. These are really cheap and worth it. They're just little clippies that you can buy. So yeah. Um, and then, yeah, if, you, and then if you're someone who stitches a ton of belts um, and you're used to working on a frame, we do carry these belt frames, um, which is not built right now, but basically the belt is wound around these, just like on a typical scroll frame. And you've got your sidebars, so you end up with about 10 inches exposed and you swirl and swirl and your tension will be perfect and it's great, uh, but it's an investment. So if you're gonna stitch one belt and be done, not a good choice. If you're gonna stitch a belt or two a year, um, the, you know, $60-ish is worth the investment, but. So, you know, uh, it's worth noting that if you are a System 4 user, opposed to a wooden frame user, their System 4 also does have a, they call it the belt scroll and it's narrow. Um, yeah. That can be applied to your System 4 frame. Um, you know, we have people too who do uh, stretcher bars and they will just make a really awkward looking stretcher bar and just, do a bit of it at a time, and that's perfectly fine too. Yeah, um, the I think, only one is a five inch, five inch width though, and I think most belts are just shy of five inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. for sure. Um, but yeah, so it's a possibility, and um, you know, again, there's no needlepoint police. You can do whatever and however you want. We just want to just give you some tips. So, um, did we cover it? I'm sorry that we kept everybody so long, but belts yeah. are just a complicated deal but aren't they wonderful there's so many things well, you can do i know and i feel like you're such the expert on the the men's belt and i'm kind of gone over my edge on the fancy belts so <laughs> you've got quite the collection you kind of got it down <laughs> um and you know um there's always space for comments uh at the bottom of the of this um episode and so if there's questions please please ask we're happy to help um and also note um a lot of our colleagues use the same finishers as we do, but a lot of them don't. So um, right. there's, there's other finishers out there for sure. We just happened into the same one, which is kind of funny. And so the point being, you may have different specs for your local needlepoint shop than we do, but right. this is just a, 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 just a point of reference for um, kind of a, a standard belt. Yeah. Um, so, because some finishers require the binding stitch, ours prefers to not have the binding stitch. So. I think message noted that you should just always check with whoever's going to finish your belt before you get too far into it. That's right. And I think um, just another quick point in, um, is that I believe both of us have the um, finishing form, excuse me, that's not right, the measuring form, I'm sorry, form. on our yeah. websites for reference. So um, it gives you kind of two different ways to measure based on which kind of belt um, for, the, for the standard belts. Um, just as a, an extra point of reference, a visual reference, which is sometimes helpful. So in case you don't know the word thingy and, and switchamajiggy and prong-ish and this and that. Yeah, I actually, you know, <laughs> I'm fairly educated. I just don't like to show it off. <laughs>
we know. We know. <laughs> it's entertainment value. I mean, our ratings go up. We're more entertaining, right? Do we have ratings? Uh, no. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> All three people who watch us, yes. <laughs> All right, girlfriend. Well, um, I think that's yeah. all we got, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. So thanks everyone for sharing time with us and God bless you all for sticking with us. That does this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> have a okay. great day. You have a good one too. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.